There are five things you need to check on your computer right now. These are the same things that I immediately check and change to make my computer that much safer. And the best bit, they're so quick to do and you can get back to your favorite streaming show. We all know that for malware to work, it typically needs to make changes to your computer. It does this in silence so that you're not aware that it's happening. Well, what if you could know and stop it? Let's change the UAC, which is the User Account Control. We've all seen this. You go to the internet, you find a program that you want to install, and you'll get this notification. But did you know this is completely controllable? And here's why you should. Head down to your search bar and then type there UAC, which says Change User Account Control Settings. Choose when to be notified about changes to your computer. User account control helps prevent potentially harmful programs from making changes to your computer. By default, this is where it's set. Don't notify me when I make changes to Windows settings. Why this is dangerous is because malware is typically gonna use your account to make changes, so it's not gonna notify you. When you change this to always notify you, it will notify you anytime anything make changes to your computer. So go and check your settings. Make sure it's not set to never notify me because some malware can do that. And watch this, when you try and install a program, it just installs. This is super dangerous. Personally, I strongly suggest changing this to the maximum. And only if you see you're getting too many notifications to deal with, then fine, lower that protection amount. But in reality, it's easier to click on yes on the screen than have something weird happening to your computer without your knowledge. Okay, now let's go check out the type of account that you're currently using. To the Windows search we go, and we're gonna type there control, and then you'll see control panel pops up. Simply click on that. And now we wanna click on user accounts and then user accounts again. Now you'll see this is the user I'm using for this computer. It's called Test PC. It is a local account, not a Microsoft account. It's got administrative privileges and it is password protected. So on the surface, this seems okay. But let me show you why this is a bad idea. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on change your account type. Now you can see that the administrator has complete control over the PC. They could change any settings and access all the files and programs stored on this computer. But a standard account, well, that can only change things that don't affect other users or the security of this PC. But you can see it's grayed out. We can't change this to be a standard user. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cancel that screen. We're gonna click on manage another account. And at the bottom, you're gonna see there, add a new user in PC settings, and then add someone to this PC. When this pops up, you're gonna say, how will this person be signing in? We wanna click on, I don't have this person signing information, because we wanna create a local account, not a Microsoft account. And now we're gonna select on, add user without a Microsoft account. We wanna click on that. And now it's gonna ask us, okay, who's this user? Let's give it a name. I'm just gonna type there, I don't know, my non-admin user. And we're gonna complete this by giving it a nice secure password, including the questions. And now we have my non-admin user, which is a local account. That is the username we should be using whenever we log into our Windows machine. Now related to the admin versus standard account, you wanna check that nobody has added any funny accounts to your computer that you don't know about. And back to the Windows search we go, and this time we're gonna type there N-E-T-P-L-W-I-Z, or Z. And this is gonna pop up, click on that. Now we're gonna see a list of users that we have created on this computer. If you see anything that you don't recognize, something that you didn't create, get rid of it. Now at the top, click on Advanced, and at the bottom, it says secure sign-in. This basically means that it will ask you to press Control-Alt-Delete to make sure that you are the right person logging into this computer. So you're not giving away your username and password to a malware program that has taken over. This is what it's gonna look like. And one simple tick just makes your computer that much more secure.
I have no idea why all these security settings are hidden all over Windows and we need to discover and decipher them. Well, if you're not a fan of this, I would strongly suggest checking out the System Mechanic Ultimate Defense from Iolo, who are today's sponsor. Here is what the System Mechanic Ultimate Defense looks like. It will simply look after your computer like a mechanic in your system, constantly optimizing and fixing things. You can do it manually or you can let it do it automatically. Now under the privacy tab, which is the privacy guardian, here you have a bunch of options, maximum, standard, minimal, and custom. And what is nice is next to each one, there's that little eye. And if you press that eye, it just shows you the kind of information that it's going to help protect your data against. And look how extensive that list is. And if you don't know what anything is, again, little I, press on it, and it will give you some information about what it's doing. Look, frankly, none of us want to be spending hours and hours trying to hack registries and learn each component, and we don't need to. If you go into your Privacy Guardian, you can select the option that you want, you can customize to your likings. So if you see something that you think it doesn't need to protect you against, fine, disable it. But the rest of it, leave it enable. I am pretty techy with this kind of stuff and I have this on my main computer because I just want the constant protection that this offers me. This is pretty sweet. Check out the link in the description where we have 60% off because you're awesome and you're watching this channel. Right, next up, let's talk about DNS. DNS is often described as the telephone book of the internet. You don't know what Google's IP address is, so you type google.com into your browser and the DNS translates that into the IP address, sending your browser to the right location. The entire internet works on DNS. The problem is that DNS can be poisoned. So a hacker can technically take over the DNS and as you think you're going to your banking website, but in fact you land up on their hacker lookalike phishing site where you're willingly giving them the username and password. So it's time to change the DNS from your service provider's DNS to a secure one, something like Cloudflare's DNS or Google's DNS. Uh, uh, check this out. And back to the Windows search we go, and this time we're gonna type network and we're gonna click on view network connection. Now you'll see a whole bunch of options here depending on what you've got going on. Select the one that you're currently active, right click on it, click on status, click on details, and here you'll see all the information related to your active network connection. You'll see under the DNS server, well, that's gonna have typically the IP address of your router, and it goes from your computer to your router to your ISP, which typically uses their DNS server. I wanna change it, so I'm gonna click on properties. I'm gonna look down this list and see something called TCP IP4 and click on that and then click on properties and at the bottom i'm going to select my own dns i don't want the automatic one and under the preferred dns server i'm going to put in 8.8.8.8 .8 and under the alternative server 8.8.4.4 and that is google's dns and we're going to click ok so now we've told the computer, hey, don't use my ISP's DNS, rather use Google's. And we can see that, we go into the details, it has been updated. Now we have Google's DNS server in there. Now perhaps you don't like Google's DNS for whatever reason that you may have, you wanna use something else. No problem, same thing. Click back into properties, and this time we're gonna go into the TCP IP again. We're gonna click on properties, and instead of the Google server, maybe you wanna use Cloudflare. So 1.1.1.1 is the preferred DNS server. The alternative is 1.0.0.1. And we're gonna click on OK. So now you've just told the computer, hey, don't use Google's, don't use my ISP's DNS, rather use Cloudflare's. So now everything leaving your computer is gonna use whatever DNS server that you have chosen. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just wanna use a specific DNS when you're browsing the web. No problem, we can do that too. So I'm gonna use Google Chrome in this example. Open up Chrome, click the three little dots at the top, click on settings. And under settings at the top which says search, just type there DNS. And then click on security. If you scroll down, you should see something called Use Secure DNS, and it's either enabled or disabled. If it's disabled, enable it. Now remember, this is not a VPN. I wanna be clear, this is not a VPN. 
All it does, it says, hey, that telephone thing, look up. If you're hitting a website, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right information back from that website so that you're always landing up in the right location. And these custom DNSs do a great job in blocking out malicious sites. They get constantly updated with specific ransomware sites, with phishing sites, and they're constantly protecting you as you're browsing the web. My big suggestion is play with the different options. Choose one, go browse the web, and if it's nice and fast, keep it. If sometimes you find that one of the DNSs is slow, and therefore you're seeing a slower website, then simply change it. Next, please make sure this setting is enabled in your system restore. So if anything happens to your computer, you can get it back along with any versions of the files. Okay, this one is a quickie. Go to your Windows search, type there system restore. You'll see an option there called create a restore point. Then on the screen, go to where it says configure, click on that. And at the top, it says, by enabling system protection, you can undo undesired changes by reverting your computer to a previous point in time. Make sure the turn on system protection is enabled. It should be enabled by default, but sometimes I've seen that it isn't. Click OK, and that's pretty much it. So now, since the system is working perfectly fine now, go ahead and create a restore point. This is a point in time where everything is working. And if anything should happen in the future, you can come back to this point. So give it a name. I'm gonna call it Mom Secure. Click on Create. And depending on how big your hard drive is and how much data you have on it, it may be quick, it may be slow, but then it's done. And now we have a point to come back to. Now that you've made your computer that much safer, check out this video over here where I show you five commands that you absolutely need to know that could also save your computer. Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Give the video a thumbs up, hit the head here to subscribe, and I will see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.